I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to take a look at wildcards and specifically how to use wildcards with the like and a like operators. And uh, these are very, very handy when you need to find some simple patterns uh, in, in, in your text fields and uh, can definitely make your life a lot easier. So without further ado, let's get to our wildcards in Microsoft Access. Okay, so just to get started, uh, this is a file we've used for a lot of our demos. I've got a candy table, uh, which I've sort of highlighted in a group here, um, and it just has uh, some candy in it of different types. And, uh, and then I have a SQL server table, which is on Azure SQL, so this is in the cloud. Um, that I've done a linked table on, and it has the same data. Uh, the IDs are a little bit different because uh, those are auto-generated, but the data itself is, is pretty much the same. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some, some queries, and we're going to use wildcards. And uh, so we'll do a create uh, query design, and you can close the pop-up just like I did there, and then just drag your uh, your table onto the query and I'm going to select the star there which means to select select all and uh, and then I'm going to grab the the candy type field by double clicking and then I'm going to click off the show checkbox um, because I'm just going to use it to do some some criteria and so our basic uh, wildcard is the star in Microsoft Access and so I can go um, like, you know, star OFF star, and that'll give me toffee uh, because it has uh, OFF somewhere in, in the string. Uh, so the star is like a multi-character wildcard, so it can have any length, um, you know, uh, in front of or after um, the star. And so I could say candy type like you know, OFF with stars around it, or I could say, uh, or yeah, I could put it on the next line there. I could say like ZZ for candy name, and that would give me uh, anything with candy name that has ZZ in it, or ZZ if you're from the United States, uh, and everything that has OFF in it, um, which is uh, uh, gives us our toffee um, rows there. And we also have a single character wildcard. So we could say, uh, you know, not multi-character. We want to definitely keep the, you know, keep the length and we want to search very specifically uh, for a pattern like that. And so we could say uh, where um, we have, it's like OFFE and then have some question marks around it. So we know that, um, it's definitely six characters long, and it has it could be any characters on each end of that, but it has to be six characters. So we would use the question mark for that, and uh, that's um, that's definitely one way we can do it. So we could also do it. You know, you can put it in the middle of your of your uh, uh, query. You can put the uh, question mark there if you want to specify that there's only a, a single character in there. That could be different. Um, then you could definitely do that. So the star and the question mark are from ANSI 89 SQL uh, sort of compatibility and so uh, you can set your your uh, database file to be uh, either 89 or 92 compatible and so if I use the percent sign which is the 92 compatibility uh, you'll see that it does not give uh, uh, any return uh, values there. Um, and if I use the underscore, which is the same or the equivalent of the question mark uh, in our previous example, you'll see that we also do not get that here. And you can change the uh, settings of your file to use um, the different compatibility level, um, but uh, uh, you'll you, if you do see that you don't get any any results, it might be because you have a different compatibility level. So you need to use the other um, set 
of characters um, depending on your situation. Um, now this is an ODBC linked table to um, uh, Candy Azure SQL. Um, so I'm going to do kind of the same queries and you'll notice that um, the so when when we have an SQL server backend or an Azure SQL backend, um, typically it's pretty forgiving. Um, so the, it, it does kind of like the translation in there. Um, so you can use the star, although I don't really recommend it uh, if you're programming, you know, an application uh, because you'll depend, you know, depending on the, the ODBC backend, um, the stars may or may not work. Um, but in this example, you'll see um, I'm using the uh, ODBC driver uh, version 17 for SQL Server here. Um, and so you'll see it works uh, with, the st with the stars. Um, and, uh, and that's good to see. But uh, you should use the uh, percent sign and the uh, underscore if you're if you're programming against SQL server linked tables but in this case you can see that you can use either or um, it seems to be just fine with either of those if I use the percent sign or or the star um, then either of those works um, and you'll see I get the toffee just like I was expecting all of the toffee rows um, and uh, and that works great. Um, so what if I use the underscore? Um, so I can use the underscore um, just like we used the question mark in the previous example. It will you know give me you know all the rows with with uh, you know uh, T O F and then could be a wild card and then E E on the end. Um, then that's something uh, that we can definitely do. Now. Uh, also, you can use a like, uh, which is the ANSI 92 uh, version, and it's a little bit more specific. Um, it, it will also work in some cases, depending on the uh, type of, you know, ODB type of database server that you're using ODBC against. Sometimes you'll find that only a like will work in your queries. So it's good to know that that's an option because you might spend all this time trying to get something to work with the like operator and and you'll see that uh, a lot of times it does not work and you have to use a like. Um, so just be aware that um, a like is something that you need to use sometimes depending on the back end. Uh, here I'm looking for anything with dark in the candy name and you see that it, it picked up all of those. Uh, or any any rows that start with the word dark since I only have the percent sign on the end. Now see if I try to use a like with the star or the uh, question mark which is the ANSI 89 um, um, syntax you'll see that it doesn't like it um, since a like is uh, actually the 92 um, version so if I put that into my query, I won't get any. I won't get an error, but I also won't get any rows returned. And so you might be getting some conflict between those. So just make sure that you give it a try and see if you're not getting what you're expecting. You might need to use a like instead of a like, or vice versa. And uh, and and you can definitely um, try different combinations of those until you see. Uh, exactly what you want to see. And just to round out our conversation, I would like to show that you can say not like um, to remove rows from your result set. And uh, the toffee in this case with the uh, with the wild card there, um, that one uh, will be removed. Uh, and we could also say anything with OFF in it and then any number of characters on each side will also be removed and so you can see how that works if we wanted to you know also do our also remove our fizzers there we can do that and in this case we'll use the the and part of the criteria so I'll double click on the candy name and if you put them on the same row it means that uh, that's that's an and so we'll say not like 
off and not like uh, ZZ or ZZ, depending on where you're from. And uh, in this case, this will remove both of them. And so <clears throat> you can run that query and uh, that those patterns will be picked up and removed from your from your result set. So you can also use not, uh, which is very, very uh, handy. And if I flip over to our Candy Azure SQL, which is the SQL server backend, I can also say not like and put some kind of pattern in there and it will remove those rows uh, from the result set. And um, that's really a handy way of, of querying against the SQL server backend or, or a different database if you have that. And there's an example with the percent signs. And that's how you can use wildcards in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use wildcards in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and put any questions or comments in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.